How's it going? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this environment right here. It's sort of like a hanger. Now, normally when I make tutorials, I just go through how to do this. But here in this one, I'm going to explain what makes the uh, the scene look like the scale that it is. I'm going to be giving you the theory as to why it looks big and not like minuscule camera tricks, material tricks, things like that to make to basically communicate scale. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get this model right here, shade it a little bit, light it, and then we're going to animate it to make it look like it goes into kind of a hyperspace animation. This tutorial is brought to you by Concierge Renderer. We're going to be using the render farm to render this at the end of the tutorial, but let's get into the tutorial. All right, so in this tutorial, you can render them both in EV and Cycles. They'll look fairly similar. I personally like the Cycles render, but EV looks almost just as good. So whatever engine you want to use and follow along with, we'll be designing this in EV and sort of checking it out in cycles as we design. So let's get into it. So delete everything out of your scene. What we're going to do is we're going to hop on into a cylinder and then in the add cylinder section, give it six vertices. What we're going to do is we're going to hit R Y 90. And uh, now we have this here. So we're going to hit tab right up here. We're going to go to face select, click that, go over here, click that by holding down shift. So if you just have one, hold down shift, click the other one, hit X and click faces. So now we have this scene right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to tab by holding down a uh, shift, click these top three, hit X and click faces. Then we're going to mirror this. So let's get into empty and just drop the plane axis right there Then click on this. We're going to go to the modifiers and we are going to add in the mirror modifier. And then right here on mirror object, click that empty. So this empty is actually going to control the mirroring. Now unclick X and click Z. So when you play with this empty here, it goes up. And if you click on the model, they do that. So there's some animation ideas we can go with that as well if you want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring it up a little bit like that. And then what we're going to do is hit tab. And then right up here, go to edge select. Now click this one right here. Now hit E for extrude and then Y to extrude it on the Y axis and just bring it pretty far out like that. And then on this one right here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit E, Y, extrude it pretty far out. So now we have this model right here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale it out. So right over here, we're gonna hit the scale tool and just stretch them out like this. Now hit control A and apply scale so that we can work everything in the proper scale. We're gonna hit tab again, and we're gonna add some loop cuts. So right over here, you're gonna see loop cut right here. Just click once, and then right down here, just bring it up till you like the amount of loop cuts we're gonna be doing. If you look at the original animation, we're gonna have those bars. So you don't wanna to have too many because then it'll make your um, hanger look really small. So definitely a fewer amount of loop cuts will make your hanger look much bigger on scale. Okay, so now we have this. We're gonna go back here to the uh, move tool out of the loop tool, we have this. Now we can start shading and doing things in here. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to add modifier and I'm going to add in a wireframe. Do that. Now click replace original, unclick that. And then we're gonna just bring the thickness up a little bit. Now I don't like the average, this look of it. Another thing on scale, if you see these really sharp, sharp objects, it's not gonna make it look like it's really big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this wireframe look a little bit more unique by adding a bevel. And then when we add that bevel, you can see it looks, it looks much different. It looks uh, more like a beam than a wireframe modifier. And then we'll just go over here on the wireframe thickness and just bring it up just a little bit. So now we have these cool beams and then you can bring up your uh, segments if you'd like to make it look a little bit better. Okay, so now we have this big hanger. What I'm gonna do is take it, go to the scale tool right over here and scale them out like that. And I'm gonna hit control A, apply scale. So now we have this super cool thing. So another thing that's gonna make your hanger look like it's really big um, is the uh, camera. So we're gonna be using a wide angle lens camera. So shift A, we're gonna go ahead and add a camera. Go over here, control alt zero, snap it to view. And then we're gonna go and place him right about here we want to be sort of kiss the edge. Now, in your camera settings, right over here, you're gonna see focal length. Put it at 20, and that really boosts the wide angle look of your lens here. And then you can hit R twice and sort of put it where you want. So I want it to be right about there. And then I'm bring it down because I wanna be able to see right in here because that's gonna add a really cool compositional thing 
um, a little bit later. All right, cool. Now we have this. We can start moving into shading. What I'm going to do is to add that fog, that volume. We're going to add in a cube here. And then we're just going to scale them up the way we want. So fill up the scene just like this. Bring them up. Now, when you're designing, this guy is going to get in the way because it's this big box and we don't want to be in here and dealing with that. So right over here, you'll see this little yellow box here. Go to viewport display and display as wire. So he stays out of the way, but he's still existing in the scene and working just like it were solid. So now let's go over to shading. We're going to be in the EV view. This is the cycles view. Let's go over to EV. And uh, we have this. So let's just go here, click on this big guy, and we're going to add in a basic metallic shader and keep it at uh, white. Bring it all the way up. So now it's there. Click on this box here. Click new. We're going to delete this principled, and we're going to type in volume right here, principled volume, and we're going to give it a density of 0 0.3, and we're pretty much going to keep it there for the whole thing. Now, it's very important that you plug this volume into the volume socket of the material output. If you put it on the surface, nothing's going to happen. So put it on volume. So now we have some volume in our scene. Now we have this. So last thing I want to do before we hop on over to using this, not using this HDRI, is I'm going to add in a point light into the scene. So right over here, shift A, go to the light, point light, and then I'm going to bring over this stuff so we can move things around. I'm going to bring him all the way to the end of the scene. And then we have that. I'm going to give it a strength of 10,000. So we have that. Now, what we can do here in Eevee, if you click this drop down, you can use scene lights and scene world, and it works with what you have in the scene. It doesn't add that default HDRI like you see here. So just click those two, and now we're working with our, uh, our scene the way we want. And this is how it's gonna look if you render it here in Eevee. So what I'm gonna do, another just compositional thing and lighting thing, is bring this guy over here to the edge so he's poking through like this. And then I'm gonna change the color over here to something around that. So let's get into shading. All right, so make sure you're in the shading tab here, the shader editor, delete these and take this and delete that. I have a better view. All right, so now that we're in here, we're gonna click on our object here. We have this basic metallic shader. We're gonna add in two textures to drive this. So we're gonna add in a musgrave to add those that dust, so sort of that roughness. And then we're gonna add in a, a, a Voronoi to add some interesting looking blocks that'll add to the scale of our scene. So bring these guys over here. We're gonna add in a color ramp so we can control how um, it affects the roughness of our scene. So we're gonna add in a color ramp and plug this color ramp straight into the roughness. So first let's make sure the Musgrave texture is in order. So we're gonna plug that into the color ramp and it looks crazy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the dimension all the way down to zero detail all the way up we're going to bring a scale of i'm going to give it scale of one and then lack of is really what's going to give it that crazy looking detail first you can see it's kind of stretched out looking so we're going to go to the uh, preference here into the add-ons and make sure that the node wrangler is enabled check that and then when we do that you can hit Control t as the texture setup and use the object coordinate and that's going to allow it to look nice and even so we have this so bring our scale down some more till you like how it looks. And then as you bring your scale down, keep an eye on this. Now it looks kind of um, not really detailed. So in your lack of you can just bring it up till it looks nice and detailed on our roughness. Now, this looks pretty bad, almost like rundown rust. This is not what I'm going for. I just want a sort of a subtle dust kind of look. So what I'm going to do here on the color ramp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this and flip the color ramp. I'm going to make this a little bit less than white, so more on the gray. And then this portion, I'm gonna bring it up pretty substantially till we get this look right right about here. Now we're working with something we like. Now let's go and switch over to the Voronoi texture. So I'm gonna bring this mapping node and plug it into the vector. All right, so we're gonna use the color thing because if we use distance, it's not gonna look, it's gonna look like it has depth. As you can see, it kind of gradients. Color, it's a flat a flat color this is what we want so i'm gonna change 3d to 4d keep it at f1 and change to we're gonna change it over to chevy chev so now we get these cool blocks now another thing that's going to add a look of scale to your model here is the size of these blocks so we're going to bring up the scale pretty substantially if you have these big blocks it's going to look like your scene's a lot bigger than it really is if you use these little bitty blocks it does kind of help but these big blocks, in terms of just this style we're going for, you want them to be big. 
So now that we have that, we can plug these together. We want these both to sort of interact together in a cool way. We're going to add in a mix RGB and plug that right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Musgrave and plug it into the color two socket. So now they're interacting together. So we can use this factor to play with how they interact. If you bring it all the way to zero, it shows the Voronoi. All the way to this side, shows the Musgrave. So we kind of want them to play along. And you can mess with the slider till you get them interacting in the way that you'd like. So right about here, I like that. So now you get this really cool interior look. And then I'm going to add a bump node, plug the normal to the normal, and plug the Voronoi into this bump node. Just to get a little bit of fun there adds to the scene and it looks really really cool so you have the light interacting with this bump node if you don't like it you can bring down the strength a little bit playing around with it however you like so so far we have this i'm going to take our building here our uh, interior and bring it up just like that so we can kind of see a better line what's going to be here on the composition this line right here is going to look really really cool as we're playing along with it i'm going to go ahead and change the color of our light to the one I have in the original, so just like that. And then here on the base color, if it's too bright for you, you can bring it down a lot like this, and this is really helping out the scene. Now we get something really cool. So now we're done with shading. We're done with everything here. Okay, so now we're done with shading. Just as a preview, let's see how it looks here in Cycles. Personally, I like this look a lot better, but you can do literally anything you want. So. And obviously it renders faster in Eevee. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to be using an asset for our um, our ship. So we're going to hop on over to a really cool website called BlendSwap. And right here, plug that there. So this is the ship I'm going to be using. So what you can do is go into the ship, I mean, to the search terms and type in ship, type in plane, whatever you want, and you'll get some really cool models. So this one's here. The creator is BC. Um, so got to give credit to this guy. He made an incredible model. So we're going to download him and I'm just going to throw him into the scene. So what, so to import those files, go to file append and then find where the uh, ship is located. So it would be right here, sci-fi shuttle. You click on it, click object, and then hit a to select all of them imports that ship into the scene. And then all I'm going to do is delete the uh, camera that came with it. So now we have this ship. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn him around, scale him down a little bit, and then we'll bring him back. So play around with the position of him. So we're gonna actually animate this guy to come in and out of the scene. So I'm gonna go back to the material preview and then switch over to scene world scene lights. We have this. Um, we're gonna to go to Eevee here real quick and turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. So now we get bloom here on our ship. So on the original one that I played with, I actually messed with um, uh, some of the materials here, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to do that. So we're just going to animate him. So I'm going to give my, I'm going to keep it at 250 frames for now. We'll see if I need to go past that. So I'm going to start him here, super stretched out. And what I'm going to do, and then looks like it's the X lo location that needs to be animated. I'm going to hit the keyframe right here, and then we'll just go to solid view for now. And then I'm going to go however long I want it to wait. Go right about to there. We're going to go in just like this. He's going to go about to there and that right there is where I want him to shoot out. So I'm going to do that. So we'll just see how it animates. Just like that. Looks really nice. You can see it's a bezier curve, but we'll play with that in a little bit. And then right here, we want it to be super fast. So then I'm going to go all the way out hit the keyframe. So if we just watch it. Okay, so we're going to play with this keyframe and this keyframe right here. So let's go back to shading. And instead of the shader editor, we're going to go to the graph editor. And we're going to play with this things, these things called curves to make to uh, sort of communicate that animation a little bit better. Okay, so this is how it looks by default, it curves in, goes straight up and curves back out, you can see. So what I want to do is take this guy, and we want it to take off really, really fast, um, but still have that keyframe. So all we have to do is drag this guy this direction. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the animation start off really, really quick. So as you can see, we'll press play. It looks a lot better than it did originally. So you see, just goes out just like that. So we'll just watch it from the beginning. 
just like that. Looks like that Star Wars hyperspace look. And he stops up there. What I did in the original animation was I actually scaled, right when he hit here, scaled him down to zero so you couldn't see it rather than animating him even further out because that would create problems. Just like that, and now you have this really cool animation. Go back to rendered view. So now that we have this, let's hop on over to Core Weave and we're going to render this because it looks like it's about, for me, about 97 frames. So for me, I like how it looks in cycles, so we're going to use cycles to render this. So what you want to do is just save your file on your desktop or wherever you like. So we're just going to call this ship. We'll call it ship2, just in case I have another one. And then on the desktop, and we're going to save the file. Now let's hop on over to Core Weave. All right, so for those of you who don't know what Core Weave is, it's an amazing render farm that caters to the Blender users. It's incredible. You can throw your scenes in there, and if you don't have a lot of time, or if you have a client that needs something yesterday and it's not done yet, you use their service and you get extremely fast renders, especially if it's a really hefty render for cycles. And they work with Eevee as well. It's an incredible company. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the file manager and I'm going to go add files and we're going to pick ship. So ship to load him in and we're going to find it in my files. All right. So right here, ship to, we're going to click launch render. So this is Blender 2.81. We're going to be using cycles and it is an animation frame selection. We're just going to keep it at default on the resolution. I'm going to keep it at native resolution and advanced. I'm going to give it 500 samples. So, and then we'll just cl click render and we'll wait for it to finish rendering. All right, so we're done here. So you can see it started at uh, 2541 and it ended at 2807. And this is all the frames that rendered. It's incredibly fast. This is 500 samples. And if you want to take a preview at one of the frames, full 1080p resolution, just a little bit noisy, and we can knock that out with some denoising. And it's an incredible, incredible render done with their product. And this only cost me $5.03. It's amazing. It's a great product. So yeah, I hope you followed along with this tutorial. I'm super happy with it. Have fun animating. Have fun making your cool little hangers. Hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.